Su Yuntao raced to Holy Soul Village, seeking out Old Jack immediately upon arrival. The sight of Su Yuntao made Old Jack tense. Three months prior, Su Yuntao had tasked him with convincing Zhang Chen to enroll in Wuhan Hall, a task Old Jack had failed to accomplish. Before Su Yuntao could utter a word, Old Jack preemptively apologized, Master Su Yuntao, I haven't succeeded in persuading that boy Zhang Chen to join the Spirit Hall. Su Yuntao, momentarily taken aback, quickly shifted the conversation's focus. Old Jack, that's no longer important. Where is Zhang Chen's grave? I wish to pay my respects. Master Su Yuntao, are you jesting? Old Jack responded in disbelief. Had it been anyone other than Su Yuntao, Old Jack might have resorted to physical reprimand. Old Jack, I must confess it's my fault. Jiang Chen's death was caused by me, Su Yuntao admitted with a look of remorse. What? Old Jack's face drained of color, and he nearly collapsed, only for Su Yuntao's quick reflexes to catch him. Village Chief Jack, please don't despair. If not for my actions, Jiang Chen might still be alive. Old Jack, fueled by a surge of emotion, grabbed Su Yuntao by the collar, demanding, Explain yourself. How and when did Xiao Chen die? Su Yuntao, now equally confused, replied, Wasn't Jiang Chen reported to have drowned in the river shortly after his awakening? In truth, he might have been murdered. Unable to contain his fury, Old Jack struck Su Yuntao with his cane, exclaiming, Curse you! I personally sent him to Nodding Junior Soul Master Academy just a few days ago. How could he have died three months ago? Did you come all this way to mock an old man? Old Jack's words threw Su Yuntao into a state of confusion, which quickly turned to excitement as he grasped Old Jack's shoulders. Are you saying Zhang Chen is alive? Of course, Old Jack retorted, still visibly upset. The entire village can vouch for it. If you doubt my word, you're welcome to verify it at Nodding Junior Soul Master Academy. Realization dawned on Su Yuntao. Perhaps Matthew Nuo had deceived Cece, who in turn misled him. What brings you to our holy soul village today? Old Jack demanded, his anger towards Su Yuntao palpable. Eh, I merely intended it as a jest, Su Yuntao awkwardly confessed before hastily making his exit, too embarrassed to face Old Jack's wrath any longer. Once outside the village, Su Yuntao's embarrassment gave way to excitement. He was eager to share the news with Sisi, hopeful that Zhang Chen's survival could be the key to exacting revenge on Matthew Nuo. Unbeknownst to Zhang Chen, Su Yuntao had learned of Matthew Nuo's scheme and had even visited Holy Soul Village. Zhang Chen had hoped to keep his survival a secret a while longer. Meanwhile, at Nodding College, Jing Wuming had completed the task assigned by Zhang Chen and reported back. Master, everything is arranged for the day after tomorrow. It coincides with the Spirit Hall's day off, ensuring our plan's safety. Zhang Chen, leaping off a rock with a smile, praised Jing Wuming. Excellent work. The day after tomorrow, we'll head to the Wuhun Hall together to witness a truly thrilling spectacle. This secluded grove within the academy grounds had become a private haven for Jiang Chen and Jing Wuming. Teachers steered clear, and students, aware of Jing Wuming's presence, dared not intrude. Over the past few days, this spot had served as their sanctuary. Jiang Chen had become a rare visitor to the dormitory, dedicating his days and nights to relentless practice. As darkness enveloped them, Xu Yuntao made his way back to Nodding City, finding Sisi already home from work. Sisi, I have great news, Su Yuntao announced with a burst of joy as he stepped through the door. What great news? Sisi asked, puzzled. Given their recent expulsion, Su Yuntao's sudden elation seemed out of place. Zhang Chen is alive, Su Yuntao exclaimed, unable to contain his excitement. The village chief of Holy Soul Village informed me that Zhang Chen is currently enrolled at Nuadi, the elementary soul master academy. Is that so? Sisi responded, skepticism lacing her voice. She vividly remembered Matthew Nuo's confident declaration of Jiang Chen's demise. Yes, it's true. The head of Holy Soul Village personally escorted him to Nodding College a few days ago, along with another boy named Tang San. Tang San? Sisi echoed, a hint of realization dawning on her. Today, I met a child who had just been certified as a soul master, also named Tang San. Su Yuntao paused, a frown creasing his brow. Have you returned to working at the Spirit Hall? He inquired. Shaking her head, Sisi quickly recounted her encounter with Jing Wuming and her plans for revenge against Ma Xu Nuo. Su Yuntao's laughter filled the room, a sound of pure, unbridled joy. 
his disdain for Matthew Nuo had only deepened after the latter's betrayal of Sisi and their subsequent expulsion. Sisi's scheme promised a fitting retribution for Matthew Nuo's actions. Do you know who the boy seeking you out was? Suyun Tao asked. Curiosity peaked. Sisi shook her head. I'm not sure. He wouldn't disclose his identity. It's possible he's one of the many people Matthew Nuo has wronged over the years. Their conversation revealed layers of intrigue and unresolved tensions, hinting at a complex web of relationships and a thirst for vengeance that promised to reshape their futures. After a moment of hesitation, Su Yuntao spoke up. I've been contemplating whether to forward the report on Zhang Chen's awakening to the higher-ups. Given that your plan is likely to succeed, Matthew's position will undoubtedly be compromised. Leveraging Zhang Chen's contributions might just secure him a significant role in controlling the Wuhun Hall in Notting City. Cece pondered for a moment before responding. Let's deal with Matthew first. There's no need to rush this matter. After all, he currently holds the most power, and all documents have to pass through his hands. Su Yuntao nodded in agreement. Then I'll wait and see how that old man meets his end. Zhang Chen, believing there was nothing significant to monitor, had recalled the little black sparrow, thus missing Su Yuntao and Cece's scheming. Time swiftly passed, and soon another day dawned. Cece arrived at the Hall of Spirits early in the morning, finding its gates firmly shut, as it was the institution's day off. She didn't use the main entrance but instead slipped in quietly through the back door. Following her was an obese, middle-aged woman, around forty years old, her face heavily caked with makeup and her lips overly done, presenting a somewhat unsettling appearance. Even Cece, despite being a woman herself, felt a wave of nausea upon seeing her. This woman, a prostitute, had been chosen by Cece for a specific purpose involving Matthew. Having been expelled from her profession due to her age and a dreadful disease, she was desperate enough to accept Cece's proposition without hesitation. The promise of ten golden soul coins, half paid up front and the rest upon completion of her task, was a fortune she couldn't have dreamt of earning in a month of hard labor. After ensuring the woman was well hidden, Sai Sai proceeded to Matthew's room to wait in ambush. At ten in the morning, the door to the Wuhun Hall opened and Matthew entered with a look of anticipation, locking the door behind him. Hearing the door, Cece prepared a glass of hot water. Cece, I'm here! Matthew's voice, filled with excitement, echoed as he hurried upstairs. His eyes nearly popped out of their sockets at the sight of Cece's provocative stance. As Matthew advanced towards her, Sai Sai gestured for him to pause and offered him the glass of water. Darling, have some water first to quench your thirst, she suggested. Matthew, feeling parched from his journey, eagerly accepted the glass and drank it down in one gulp, ready to proceed with their encounter. How about we try something different this time? Sisi suggested seductively. Where? Matthew asked, his breathing heavy with anticipation. He was overwhelmed by a fierce desire, more intense than anything he had experienced in his youth. The reception hall on the first floor, Sisi proposed. Matthew's eyes sparkled with mischief. Ah, seeking new thrills, are we? Then let's indulge just this once. The thought of being in the hall while the street outside bustles with people is thrilling. As he spoke, Cece dashed downstairs with Matthew eagerly following. However, upon reaching the bottom, he found Cece missing, and his desire intensified to the point of near explosion. Cece, Cece, he called out desperately. Suddenly, the obese woman Cece had brought along emerged, smiling coyly and advancing towards Matthew. From her hiding spot, C.C. nearly gagged at the sight. Yet Matthew, caught in the throes of his excitement, exclaimed, C.C., where did you vanish to? And embraced the woman, losing himself in his frenzy. With the situation unfolding as planned, Sai Sai discreetly exited through the back door and made her way to a tea house across from the Wuhun Hall. Upon arriving upstairs, she found Su Yun Tao already waiting. C.C., did everything go according to plan? Su Yun Tao inquired eagerly. As Cece approached, she nodded with a smile, conveying a sense of calm assurance. There's no need to worry. Let's just wait here and enjoy the spectacle, she suggested. Su Yun Tao's eyes sparkled with anticipation as he he gazed towards the entrance of the Wuhun Hall, eagerly awaiting the unfolding of the dramatic scene he had been promised. Meanwhile, 
At the window on the second floor of a neighboring restaurant, a teenager and a six-year-old boy were perched, their gazes fixed intently on the Wuhan Hall's gate. These two observers were Jing Wuming and Jiang Chen, who had just arrived in the city. By 10 o'clock in the morning, the street had already burst into life, particularly the stretch where the Wuhun Temple stood. Located in the bustling heart of Notting City, this area was especially crowded today. The reverence with which people passed by the Wuhun Hall was palpable. To most, the Spirit Hall was a place of profound sanctity. Whether they were ordinary citizens or soul masters, the Spirit Hall was regarded as a sacred and inviolable institution in the hearts of many. However, today was destined to be different. The dignity of the Wuhun Palace was about to be thoroughly desecrated, potentially turning it into the butt of jokes across the Duluo continent. As the onlookers gazed at the Wuhun Hall with respect, the doors of the palace swung open from within. What followed was a sight that no one could have anticipated. An elderly man in his 80s, accompanied by a corpulent woman whose appearance was far from pleasing, tumbled out of the hall as if oblivious to the world around them. In less than half a minute, the once lively and bustling street fell into an eerie silence. Carriages halted mid-journey, vendors ceased their hawking, pedestrians froze in their tracks, and diners stopped mid-bite, all of them staring in disbelief at the bizarre spectacle unfolding before the Wuhun Hall. The silence in the vast area was so profound that one could hear a pin drop, and it seemed as though even the flow of thoughts had been arrested, leaving everyone utterly astounded by the unfolding spectacle. That's Master Matthew Nuo, someone exclaimed, shattering the silence and stirring the crowd into a frenzy of whispers and gasps, with all eyes now fixed on Matthew Nuo. Master Nuo has always been such a gentle soul, how could he possibly bring such disgrace upon the spirit hall? Some questioned, their voices tinged with disbelief and confusion. Who knows what got into him? Perhaps he's always harbored this dark side. I've encountered many who are wolves in sheep's clothing, another speculated, voicing a common suspicion. A collective shudder ran through the crowd as someone remarked, He's over eighty, isn't he? To think he still possesses such vigor, it's quite frightening. The scene quickly turned grotesque as one person's gagging triggered a domino effect, with nearly all the men present succumbing to nausea, and even the women looked pale and distressed. Jiang Chen, who had been leisurely sipping tea, was so taken aback that he accidentally sprayed his companion, Jing Wuming, his expression a mix of shock and amusement. Cici has truly outdone herself, dealing such a blow to the spirit hall's reputation. This scandal will surely ripple through the heaven Dew empire and beyond in no time, he mused, unable to hide his glee. Su Yin Tao, however, expressed concern. Cici, don't you think we've gone too far? This could severely tarnish the spirit hall's image. Cece remained unfazed, her confidence unshaken. The true power of the spirit hall lies in its strength. This incident will soon be forgotten, she reassured him. As the crowd began to disperse, still shaking their heads in disbelief, news of the scandal spread like wildfire, thanks to the swift actions of those in the intelligence network. In the midst of the chaos, a spirit hall deacon made a beeline for Matthew Nuo, intent on intervening. However, he was met with a fierce slap that sent him flying, much to the shock of onlookers. After his outburst, Matthew Nuo stood up, stretched, and declared, Life is truly beautiful, seemingly oblivious to the commotion he had caused. His confusion only grew as he noticed the shift in his surroundings, from the spirit hall to the bustling street. Surrounded by hundreds of thousands of onlookers, he felt his world spinning, his old body trembling uncontrollably as he struggled to comprehend how he had ended up there. Wasn't I in the spirit hall? How did I get here? Can someone explain what's happening? He pleaded, his mind racing with questions. His search for Cece was cut short when he spotted a woman nearby, her condition alarming. Overwhelmed, he coughed up blood and fainted. Master Matthew Nuo! The deacon quickly scooped him up and rushed him back into the spirit hall, slamming the door shut behind them. The crowd's curiosity was piqued further when they noticed the woman hadn't moved. Why isn't she moving? They murmured among themselves. Erguzi, a skinny man, was pushed forward to investigate. Upon closer inspection, he discovered the woman was dead, sending a wave of shock through the crowd. 
She's dead, Erguzi announced, his voice laced with fear as he stumbled backward, the revelation sparking a fresh wave of panic. The mention of a contagious disease sent everyone scrambling for safety, aware that only a handful of healing soul masters had any hope of combating such an affliction. The fear of the unknown disease loomed large, overshadowing the scandal that had just unfolded as the community grappled with the potential consequences of this new threat. In the aftermath of a harrowing scene, the air was thick with a sense of dread. The notion of waiting for death as one's body slowly decayed was described as the most horrific form of torture imaginable. Amidst the chaos, a voice pierced through the panic. Damn, Erguzi, get the hell out of here. This command sent thous and scattering, marking the end of the unsettling spectacle. Zhang Chen found himself devoid of any appetite following the ordeal. Alongside Jing Wuming, he joined the throngs of people making their way towards Notting College, each step heavy with the weight of what they had witnessed. Meanwhile, a somber conversation unfolded between Su Yuntao and Sisi. Sisi, that woman is dead, Su Yuntao remarked, a hint of disbelief in his voice. Sisi exhaled deeply, her sigh carrying a mix of regret and resignation. I didn't expect things to turn out this way. I had advised her to seek refuge in another city, hoping to spare her from this fate. Yet, here we are, she lamented. Perhaps, in a way, this is a mercy for her. Being so close to death, she's now free from her suffering, Cece mused, trying to find a silver lining in the grim situation. The conversation then shifted towards the implications of the incident. We should prepare ourselves. This matter will undoubtedly reach the Pope's palace soon, and we can expect law enforcement officers to investigate. Have you completed your report on Zhang Chen? Once it's submitted, your contributions will not go unnoticed. You're poised to become the new palace master, Cece pointed out, her words laced with a mixture of hope and expectation. Su Yuntao, however, seemed to grapple with the weight of such a possibility. Cece, I've never aspired to be the palace master. I, perhaps I'm not cut out for it, he confessed, his voice tinged with uncertainty. Their exchange highlighted the complex web of emotions and responsibilities that entangled them as they navigated the aftermath of a tragedy and the looming shadow of power struggles within the Pope's palace. Green fingers gently pressed against Su Yuntao's lips. I won't allow you to belittle yourself. You are the best. The voice was firm, filled with unwavering belief. Master, didn't you personally take care of Matthew Nuo? Jing Wuming inquired his tone laced with suspicion. Zhang Chen shook his head, a serious expression on his face. Let's leave it at that. Given today's events, even dying a hundred times wouldn't suffice for his crimes. The spirit hall won't let him off easily. This matter is finally resolved. Now I can focus on my training at the academy with peace of mind, he concluded, a sense of relief evident in his voice. That same afternoon, Deacon Zhou from the Superior Palace made another visit, but this time, she was accompanied by several other deacons. Apart from Deacon Zhou, who was a soul-sect cultivator, the rest had attained the realm of soul venerable. Upon their arrival at the Spirit Hall in Notting City, they immediately detained Matthew Nuo. They lacked the authority to pass judgment on him and decided to closely monitor the situation, awaiting the arrival of the law enforcement team from the Pope's palace. Matthew Nuo, upon regaining consciousness and discovering his predicament, was terrified. Fortunately, a healing soul master among Deacon Joe's team managed to save his life just in time. Cece, as the head deacon of the Spirit Hall in Notting City, naturally assumed responsibility for overseeing Matthew Nuo's case. By the evening, a secret message was dispatched using the unique communication method of the Spirit Hall, directed at the Pope's palace. By the next day's noon, the incident involving Matthew Nuo had finally caught the attention of the Pope's palace. The Pope, enraged by the news, immediately commanded the law enforcement team to proceed to Notting City without delay, with orders to escort Matthew Nuo to Spirit City for a formal apology. In Spirit City, within the grandeur of the Pope's palace, sat a woman on the throne. She was adorned in a magnificent black robe, embellished with gold patterns, a nine-curved purple gold crown resting upon her head, and her hand clutching a scepter studded with countless gems. Her fair skin, nearly flawless visage, 
and the invisible aura of sanctity and nobility that she radiated made her an object of reverence. She was Bibi Dong, the current Pope of the Spirit Hall, revered as the most formidable leader in the Hall's history, with her cultivation depth being a mystery to many. Despite the aura of majesty she exuded, a trace of sorrow lingered between her brows. Her concern wasn't rooted in the recent debacle with Matthew Nuo. Such matters were trivial for her to resolve. It was in the solitude of night or moments of solitude that her thoughts would drift to the past. She reminisced about the teacher she once held in high esteem, who one day betrayed her trust in the most heinous manner. The love of her life, forced to leave the spirit hall due to her teacher's actions. And when she finally broke free from her teacher's grasp, she sought him out, only to find he had moved on with another woman. The consequence of her teacher's violation was a child, a being she loved deeply, yet also served as a constant reminder of her darkest days. Despite her position as the Pope, the shadows of her past haunted her, making it challenging to face her daughter without being reminded of her tormentor. As she dwelled on these thoughts, the sound of approaching footsteps snapped her back to reality, the sorrow on her face vanishing, replaced by an air of regality. The footsteps grew closer, and a young girl entered the hall. With long black hair and a delicate oval face, she appeared to be around eleven or twelve years old, yet her physique was notably mature for her age, with a height of 1.7 meters. Her presence exuded a subtle charm as she approached Bibi Dong, stopping before the throne to look up at the Pope with a mixture of respect and anticipation. With an expression of unparalleled reverence, she bowed slightly. Teacher, she greeted, the moment Bibi Dong laid eyes on the girl entering. The aura of majesty that usually surrounded her dissipated, replaced by a gentleness. The friendly smile that graced her nearly flawless face seemed to dim the grandeur of the magnificent hall. Below, the girl gazed up at her teacher, utterly captivated. Nana, have you adjusted to living in the spirit hall these past few days? Bibi Dong inquired softly. Thank you for your concern, teacher. I'm getting used to it. Juliana responded, though a hint of discomfort lingered on her face. Bibi Dong nodded, understandingly. It's natural to feel out of place initially, having just graduated. From now on, you'll train alongside me. Thank you, teacher. Juliana felt a surge of emotion. Apart from her brother and Jan, this was the first time she had experienced such kindness. Having lost her mother at a young age, Bibi Dong's warmth and care filled a void, offering her a semblance of maternal affection. Suddenly, a platinum bishop adorned with a five-pointed crown rushed in. He was about seventy years old, tall and slender, resembling a stick. Bibi Dong's brow furrowed, her aura of majesty returning as she addressed him. Salas, what brings you here in such a hurry? Sensing the Pope's slight irritation, Salas grew apprehensive and quickly presented a document. Your Holiness, this is a report from the Notting City branch. Please, take a look. Didn't I dispatch a law enforcement team there earlier today? What has happened now? Bibi Dong inquired. Your Holiness, this report isn't about Matthew Nuo. It concerns a six-year-old child. A deacon named Su Yun Tao in Notting City believes the child possesses a God-level martial soul. Solace explained hastily. Oh? Interest peaked. Bibi Dong's expression shifted. Hulina promptly took the document and handed it to Bibi Dong. Skeptical of the existence of God-level martial souls, Bibi Dong knew of only one such soul in the Duluo continent, the Angel Martial Soul. The notion of awakening a god-level martial soul, especially in a small, remote place like Notting City, seemed far-fetched. Nonetheless, her curiosity led her to open the file with a keen interest. All documents from across the continent are managed by the Platinum Bishop. The most confidential documents are submitted directly to the Pope, while those of lower importance are reviewed by the Platinum Bishop first. Given its size, Notting City wouldn't be sending the most confidential documents, so this particular document would first be reviewed by Salas. Bibi Dong believed that Salas, with his experience, would recognize the potential of the child described in the document, even if the child's martial spirit wasn't of God level. This mistake by the deacon could only mean the child's talent was extraordinary. The spirit hall, with its influence spread across the continent, annually assists countless individuals in awakening their martial spirits for free, 
using this opportunity to scout for talents. Those identified with promising abilities are invited to join the Spirit Hall for further training, with the most talented among them being sent directly to the headquarters for specialized training. Hu Liena was one such talent currently under key training. BB Dong, with a mix of curiosity and seriousness, perused the document. Her expression shifted from casual interest to intense focus, and upon finishing, she read through the document again, her smile growing wider with each word. Salas, standing below, noticed BB Dong's smile and quickly averted his gaze, fearing that his continued observation might be deemed disrespectful. After closing the document, BB Dong handed it to Hu Liena, who was beside her, and commended Salas for his significant contribution, promising him a reward for his efforts. Salas, with a smile of satisfaction, respectfully excused himself. Teacher, does the child mentioned really possess a god-level martial spirit? Juliana inquired, her curiosity piqued by Bibi Dong's reaction. Take a look for yourself, Bibi Dong suggested, hinting at the possibility of a god-level martial spirit if the deacon's account wasn't exaggerated. Juliana, after reviewing the document, expressed disbelief at the described awakening scene, suspecting exaggeration. Bibi Dong, however, countered with a rhetorical question about the likelihood of someone daring to deceive the Pope with false information, leading Hu Liana to concede that the document's contents must be true. Bibi Dong then proposed a trip to Notting City to verify the claims about the child's martial spirit, emphasizing the importance of confirming such a rare talent personally. Meanwhile, at Notting Junior Soul Master Academy, Jiang Chen was immersed in his cultivation enjoying a period of peace now that immediate threats had been addressed. His days were filled with training, both in martial arts and soul power, planning to continue this routine at the academy. The situation with the Spirit Hall remained under surveillance, especially concerning the fate of Matthew Nuo, who was expected to face severe punishment. Amidst these contemplations, Jing Wuming's sudden arrival hinted at urgent news, prompting Jiang Chen's attention. Jing Wuming approached Jiang Chen with a hesitant expression, struggling to find the right words. What's the matter? Jiang Chen asked, sensing his unease. Master, I, I may have to leave your side, Jing Wuming said, his voice tinged with loneliness. Leave? To where? Jiang Chen inquired, puzzled by the sudden announcement. Shaking his head, Jing Wuming replied, I'm not sure. My adoptive father has decided to send me to the assassin headquarters for intensive hellish training, it could take several years. Zhang Chen fell silent upon hearing this. Jing Wuming had become an invaluable ally, and over time, his constant presence had grown comforting. The thought of parting ways so abruptly left Zhang Chen feeling unexpectedly reluctant. After a moment of reflection, Zhang Chen managed to smile and said, Then, you must go. Remember to train diligently and never allow yourself to become complacent. And don't forget my earlier advice, Avoid using your skills to harm others unless absolutely necessary. Jing, Wu Ming nodded, his eyes glistening with unshed tears. But young master, without me, you'll lack a close aid. Climbing onto a nearby stone, Zhang Chen placed a reassuring hand on Jing Wu Ming's shoulder. Don't worry about me. Just focus on your training. I've reached level 14 now. I'd hate for you to fall behind while you're away. Jing Wu Ming nodded vigorously, deeply moved. His respect and gratitude towards his adoptive father were profound, but his bond with Jiang Chen had evolved into a deep spiritual connection. The time spent with Jiang Chen had subtly transformed his once cold demeanor, a change he attributed entirely to Jiang Chen's influence. When do you leave? Jiang Chen asked. This afternoon. The exact location hasn't been disclosed to me, Jing Wuming replied. Jiang Chen waved his hand dismissively, masking his inner turmoil with a calm demeanor. Then you should hurry back and prepare. There's no need for a farewell. Despite his composed exterior, Zhang Chen felt a void at the prospect of Jing Wuming's departure. Jing Wuming had become more than just a confidant. His absence would leave a palpable emptiness. Taking a few steps back, Jing Wuming suddenly knelt and bowed deeply several times in Zhang Chen's direction. What are you doing? Zhang Chen exclaimed, rushing to help him up his actions betraying the affection and respect he held for Jing Wuming. Thank you, young master, for your mercy and for giving me a chance to rebuild my life, Jing Wuming said with genuine gratitude. Understood. 
Now go, I must continue my cultivation, Zhang Chen replied, dismissing him with a wave of his hand. Jing Wuming nodded, without lingering any longer, turned, and departed. Zhang Chen sighed, a sense of emptiness enveloping him, as if something was amiss. Time swiftly passed, and two days had elapsed since Jing Wuming's departure. Zhang Chen could sense that the distance between them was increasing, their connection growing fainter until it vanished entirely. He realized that Jing Wuming had moved beyond his current range of perception. Meanwhile, activity stirred within the Wuhun Palace. The law enforcers from Wuhun City had finally made their way to Notting City. Upon their arrival, the formidable law enforcement officer wasted no time in taking Matthew Nuo into custody and withdrawing the higher-level deacons from the area. Before departing, Deacon Joe assured that he would return to Notting City to conduct a new hallmaster election ceremony once the situation with Matthew Nuo had settled. With these developments, Zhang Chen felt a chapter closing. The affairs of the Wuhan Palace no longer concerned him, prompting him to retract his surveillance. It was then that Tang San's voice broke the silence. Zhang Chen? Are you there? Yes. What is it? Zhang Chen responded, spotting Tang San as he approached. My teacher has recovered from his injuries over the past few days. He wishes to meet with you for a thorough discussion, Tang San conveyed. After a moment's consideration, Zhang Chen agreed. Okay. Respecting Tang San's teacher was the least he could do, especially given the man's commendable dedication to research. Their meeting with the master lasted over an hour. Zhang Chen was vague about how he acquired his spirit ring, merely stating that his physical constitution was exceptionally robust and sharing the unique traits of his martial spirit. The master was impressed, lauding Zhang Chen's zombie martial spirit as comparable to the world's top martial spirits. Ultimately, the master concluded that Zhang Chen's physical capabilities far exceeded those in his studies, allowing him to surpass theoretical limits and absorb a thousand-year soul ring. However, he maintained that his theory remained unchallenged, with Zhang Chen being an extraordinary exception. As Zhang Chen and Tang San left the master's quarters, Tang San halted. Zhang Chen, I wish to challenge you to a duel once more, he declared. Happy to oblige, Zhang Chen replied with a smile, having long anticipated another bout with Tang San. Since acquiring his spirit ring, Tang San's spirit power had advanced to the 13th level, and his mastery over the blue silver grass's entanglement skill had significantly improved. They stood ten meters apart on the back hill of Notting College, a spot occasionally frequented by students for sparring, but otherwise deserted. Blue silver grass, Tang San called out softly. The blue silver grass in his hands had transformed, now thicker and its leaves as broad as a palm, adorned with intricate patterns reminiscent of mandala snakes. A yellow century-old spirit ring orbited Tang San. Zhang Chen, unleash your martial spirit, I won't be holding back this time, Tang San stated. Acknowledging the challenge, Zhang Chen summoned his martial spirit, a purple spirit ring pulsating around him. I'm about to make my move, Tang San warned, the robust blue silver grass poised for action. Surrounded from all directions, Zhang Chen found himself ensnared by a dozen or so blue silver grasses that approached him with a vicious intent. Unlike others who might have dodged or immediately countered with a spirit ability, Zhang Chen stood his ground. He was curious to gauge the true power of Tang San's first spirit ring ability firsthand. The blue silver grass, resembling venomous snakes, swiftly entangled Zhang Chen, binding him tightly in mere moments. To Zhang Chen, the strength of these grasses was indeed formidable. He speculated that other soul masters at Tang San's level might struggle to break free using brute force alone. Moreover, he recalled that these grasses were not just simple bindings, they were lined with spikes capable of penetrating the skin to release a paralyzing toxin inherent to the blue-silver grass. Despite the grasses piercing his clothes with ease, Zhang Chen's skin proved to be extraordinarily resilient, rendering the spikes ineffective. Impressive strength, but still insufficient against me, Zhang Chen remarked with a grin. Without resorting to his soul skills, he began to exert his power. His strength, amplified by his zombie body and martial soul, was nothing short of terrifying. In an instant, the blue-silver grass that held him began to stretch and tear, with countless cracks appearing along the vines. Tang San, 
witnessing this, couldn't hide his shock. In his previous encounters, even formidable opponents who had used spirit abilities found themselves helpless against his blue-silver grass. Yet, here was Zhang Chen, who without even deploying his soul skills, was on the verge of breaking free. The durability is commendable, Zhang Chen acknowledged, his strength surging once more. With a resounding boom, the blue-silver grass that had tightly bound him shattered into fragments, scattering in all directions. Chapter 44. Bibi Dong Arrives Zhang Chen's experience with the blue-silver grass had given him a first-hand understanding of its power. Although it possessed a significant strength and the added effect of a paralyzing toxin, it was still not enough to hold him. His unique constitution and immense strength set him apart from other soul masters, allowing him to break free from constraints that would have ensnared others. As the debris of the blue-silver grass settled, Jiang Chen prepared himself for what was to come next, aware that the challenges ahead might require more than just brute strength. Jiang Chen's laughter echoed as he charged towards Tang San with unrestrained vigor. Having tasted the potency of Tang San's spirit abilities, Jiang Chen was now determined to overpower him. The thought of besting Tang San, the protagonist of the original story, filled him with a sense of accomplishment he had never dared to dream of before. It was only after awakening his zombie martial soul and unlocking the system's cheats that his confidence began to swell. To Jiang Chen, possessing a cheat was one thing, but having one that outshone Tang San's was exhilarating. The idea of merely following Tang San's lead had evolved. Now the prospect of making Tang San his subordinate seemed appealing. Despite his efforts, Tang San's blue-silver grass failed to bind Jiang Chen, a setback he had anticipated, though he was surprised his soul abilities made no impact. Doubt crept into his mind, wondering if the gap between them was truly insurmountable. Yet, disappointment did not slow his actions. Anticipating Jiang Chen's approach, Tang San launched his counterattack without hesitation, unleashing thousands of pebbles he had prepared in his belt. These pebbles, akin to migrating locust stones, served as Tang San's chosen hidden weapons. When launched, they resembled swarms of locusts in flight, hence their name. As Tang San's palms danced, a barrage of stones flew towards Jiang Chen. Despite Jiang Chen's superior strength, Tang San's hidden weapons amplified his own power, bolstering his confidence in not succumbing easily this time. Jiang Chen, having anticipated Tang San's strategy to maintain distance, found himself facing a relentless onslaught. Tang San's choice of stones as hidden weapons was a merciful one, yet Jiang Chen quickly found himself outmatched, unable to deflect the continuous barrage. The impact of the stones, unlike Tang San's fists, inflicted significant pain, highlighting the stark difference in damage between physical strikes and weaponized attacks. The relentless assault of hard pebbles left Jiang Chen in agony, a testament to the formidable power of Tang San's hidden weapons, a power that even Jiang Chen, with his inflated confidence, could not underestimate. Meanwhile, Tang San was equally astonished, realizing that his full force only inflicted pain without causing substantial harm. Frustrated and in pain, Jiang Chen attempted to break through Tang San's barrage, but his efforts were thwarted by Tang San's rapid fire and the precision granted by his purple demon eye. Left with no other choice, Jiang Chen activated his first soul skill, enveloping himself in stiff armor that boosted his defense by 15 times while doubling his strength and speed. Tang San watched in shock as Jiang Chen's transformation unfolded, his body now encased in a menacing black armor that left only his eyes and nose exposed. The sight of the formidable armor sent a chill through Tang San, marking a dramatic shift in the battle's dynamics. With his new armor, the pain from Tang San's stones was significantly reduced, now only causing a mild numbness upon impact. Empowered by his first spirit ability, Jiang Chen found himself impervious to Tang San's attacks. Laughing triumphantly, he surged forward, now utterly disregarding the barrage of hidden weapons. Tang San's expression shifted dramatically as he repeatedly shouted, Stop! Stop! I admit defeat! The moment the words left his mouth, Jiang Chen's fist halted, mere centimeters from Tang San's face. Breathing a sigh of relief, Tang San utilized the Ghost Shadow Perplexing Track to swiftly retreat. Realizing that Jiang Chen was no longer intimidated by his hidden weapons, 
Tang San knew it would be foolish not to concede. Why endure another beating that would leave him battered and bruised as before? Indeed, Tang San had other hidden weapons concealed within his belt space, such as bone-penetrating nails, lancets, and money darts, all of which were far more lethal than mere pebbles. Although uncertain if they could injure Jiang Chen, Tang San recognized that their simple E exchange of blows didn't warrant such ruthlessness. After creating some distance, Tang San didn't hesitate. He sprinted at full speed back to the academy. Jiang Chen was momentarily stunned by Tang San's abrupt surrender. By the time he processed what had happened, Tang San was already out of sight. Removing his armor, Jiang Chen couldn't hide his frustration. Damn it, what a loss. Tang San had been the one to propose the duel, yet he ended up conceding and fleeing. What was the meaning of this? Touching his face, Jiang Chen winced at the several large bumps and the darkening around his eyes. The pain was a stark reminder of the encounter's futility. Unbeknownst to him, he was actually fortunate. Tang San had gradually increased the power of his hidden weapons, finally using his full strength. Had it been anyone else, they might have suffered broken bones. The pain throughout his body was nearly unbearable, only slightly alleviated by his cultivation exercises. Too ashamed to return to the dormitory with his swollen face, Zhang Chen sought refuge in a secluded grove, waiting for the swelling to subside before he dared show himself again. Little did he know, this was Tang San's way of settling scores for their previous encounter on the mountain. As Zhang Chen focused on healing his injuries, Notting City was visited by figures whose presence was enough to cause a stir three times over in the small city. Unaware of their arrival, Jiang Chen was engrossed in his recovery, nursing several prominent bruises on his face that seemed unlikely to heal anytime soon. The visitors were Bibi Dong, Hu Liana, and their entourage, including a few titled Duluo, who arrived at Notting City's Spirit Hall without any fanfare, preferring a quiet entrance. Chapter 45 Hu Liana Takes Action Vote of Recommendation Requested After Matthew's promise, Cece escorted Su Yuntao back to the spirit hall, and no objections were raised by anyone. The moment Bibi Dong and her group stepped into the spirit hall of Notting City, Su Yuntao's Cece and the others sensed something extraordinary. A palpable, invisible pressure filled the vast hall, emanating from the group, particularly the woman leading them. She appeared to be in her thirties, with a nearly flawless visage that made Cece feel inferior at just a glance. Her powerful aura was intimidating, discouraging anyone from meeting her gaze. Upon revealing her identity, Bibi Dong caused Su Yun Tao and Cici to panic even more. Cici was directly involved in the incident concerning Matthew Nuo, and they had already been on edge when law enforcement showed up earlier. Fortunately, the officers had not delved deeply into the matter and had taken Matthew Nuo away, which had been a relief. However, they hadn't expected the supreme leader of the spirit hall, the Pope herself, to visit a minor place like Notting City personally. CC quickly ushered Bibi Dong and her companions into the most revered hall within the spirit hall. Your Holiness, may I inquire about the purpose of your visit to our branch hall in Notting City? Sai, Sai asked with a boldness that belied her nervousness. Bibi Dong's smile instantly alleviated the oppressive atmosphere. There's no need for alarm. I'm not here to interrogate anyone. I'm interested in meeting a young man named Jiang Chen, she explained. Hearing this, Su Yun Tao and the other deacons sighed in relief. Who among you is Su Yun Tao? Bibi Dong scanned the deacons. Su Yun Tao, elated, stepped forward and respectfully introduced himself. Bibi Dong requested a detailed account of Jiang Chen's awakening, her voice gentle and soothing like a spring breeze. Su Yun Tao, initially tense, relaxed and recounted the extraordinary phenomena observed during Zhang Chen's awakening. The elders accompanying Bibi Dong, unfamiliar with the report, were intrigued by Su Yun Tao's narrative, understanding the significance of Bibi Dong's visit. One elder expressed skepticism, suggesting Su Yun Tao might have exaggerated the events. Su Yun Tao, flustered by the doubt, insisted on the truth of his account, even suggesting verification from Holy Soul Village. Bibi Dong, with a calming gesture, reassured Su Yun Tao. Where is the boy now? she inquired. He's currently studying at the Nodding Junior Soul Master Academy in Nodding City, Su Yun Tao replied. Excellent. Nana, 
Accompany Deacon Su Yuntao to fetch the boy, Bibi Dong instructed, referring to Hu Liena, her favorite disciple whom she was grooming. Understood, teacher. Hu Liena responded respectfully and set off with Su Yuntao. An elder, still skeptical, questioned the possibility of Zhang Chen possessing a god-level martial spirit. Bibi Dong, with a knowing smile, suggested patience for the truth to reveal itself. She then discreetly tasked Elder Ghost to shadow Hu Liena and Su Yuntao, ensuring their safety. Thus, Su Yuntao and Hu Liena made their way through the streets towards the Nodding Junior Soul Master Academy, unaware of the silent guardian following them. Hu Liena led the way, her steps graceful and assured, while Su Yuntao followed a step behind, his mind racing with thoughts. He had just overheard the girl refer to the Pope as her teacher, a revelation that elevated her status to unimaginable heights in his eyes. He dared not harbor any disrespectful Thou, Htiets, towards her. Despite Hu Lina's beauty surpassing that of Sisi and her natural aura of charm, Su Yuntao forced himself to suppress any untoward thoughts by focusing on Sisi's image in his heart. Suddenly, Hu Lina turned around, her smile radiant as she caught Su Yuntao off guard. Are you afraid of me? she asked, her voice laced with amusement. Su Yuntao, momentarily taken aback, quickly shook his head, too intimidated to utter a word. You are really interesting, Hu Liena remarked with a coquettish smile, then turned away, paying him no further attention. After a short while, they arrived at Nodding College. Miss Hu Liena, we are here, Su Yuntao announced, hastening his steps to lead the way. He presented his spirit hall deacon token to the concierge, who upon recognizing the token, promptly and respectfully opened the gate for them. It's afternoon, the students are likely in their dormitories, Su Yuntao commented, his familiarity with the college evident. He had once been a student here and knew its routines well. Notting College housed seven student dormitories, with the work-study students traditionally residing in the number seven dormitory, a practice that had remained unchanged over the years. Su Yuntao approached the dormitory with confidence and knocked on the door. Excuse me, is Jiang Chen here? He inquired, his tone polite and respectful. It's Lord Su Yuntao. What brings you here? Came the surprised responses. A wave of excitement washed over the children as they crowded around Su Yuntao, their eyes wide with anticipation. The students from the village, all of whom were work students, were familiar with Su Yuntao since he had awakened many of them. Thus, when Su Yuntao arrived, they instantly recognized him. Tang San, stepping out into the open, greeted him with a hint of surprise. Lord Su Yuntao, what brings you here, looking for Jiang Chen? Despite several months having passed, Su Yuntao still remembered Tang San clearly. I have a matter to discuss with him. Do you know where I can find him? Su Yuntao inquired, his gaze sweeping through the dormitory in search of Jiang Chen, who was nowhere to be seen. Tang San nodded. He's likely in the grove near the academy's back gate. Thank you, Su Yuntao said before he hurried off. Tang San pondered. Has Master Su Yuntao not given up on recruiting Jiang Chen into the spirit hall? Meanwhile, the dormitory's entrance was crowded with students, all captivated by the sight of Hu Liena. Her beauty was unparalleled in the academy, leaving the students mesmerized and unwilling to blink, afraid to miss a moment of her presence. Su Yuntao soon emerged and departed with Hu Liena. In the grove, Zhang Chen was seated cross-legged on a large rock, focusing his energy on healing the injuries that marred his body. While injuries elsewhere were manageable, the damage to his face was of particular concern. Known for his handsome appearance, the sight of his face now, covered in large, unsightly blemishes, filled him with frustration. The sound of approaching footsteps caused Zhang Chen to open his eyes in alert. Two figures came into view, the familiar Su Yuntao and an exceptionally beautiful girl. Zhang Chen was taken aback. He had never encountered such beauty, not in his past life, nor in this one. Her allure wasn't just skin deep, it was her unique aura that truly set her apart. Zhang Chen grew apprehensive. Has Su Yuntao discovered that I'm still alive? As Su Yuntao approached, he was taken aback by Zhang Chen's disfigured appearance, but maintained a smile, asking, Young man, do you know where Zhang Chen is? Caught off guard, Zhang Chen, realizing the reason for Su Yuntao's confusion, replied, I don't know. He was certain now that Su Yuntao was aware of his survival, which complicated matters.
Zhang Chen remembered Su Yun Tao's intention to report him to the Pope's palace and knew he had to dissuade him from doing so. What do you want with Zhang Chen? Zhang Chen probed, seeking to understand Su Yun Tao's intentions. Su Yun Tao, looking disappointed, didn't answer and turned to Hu Liana. Miss Hu Liana, it seems Zhang Chen isn't here. We should search elsewhere. Hu Liana's presence at Notting College sent Zhang Chen's mind reeling. This development was entirely unexpected, diverging from the original story he knew. As Su Yun Tao began to leave, Hu Liana remained, her gaze fixed intently on Zhang Chen, as if trying to unravel a mystery. Miss Hu Liana, shall we go? Su Yun Tao asked, puzzled by her hesitation. Zhang Chen, sensing the scrutiny, looked up to meet Hu Liana's gaze. Her eyes, sharp and discerning, seemed to pierce through him. There's something off about this boy, Hu Liana declared suddenly. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Jiang Chen turned to flee. He didn't understand how Hu Liana had detected something amiss, nor why she was here, but he knew he had to escape. His association with Tang San had made him wary of any involvement with the Spirit Hall, and now was not the time to be caught. As Jiang Chen made his escape, Hu Liana's eyes sparkled with intrigue, and she swiftly pursued him. Zhang Chen darted away, leaving Su Yun Tao standing in bewilderment. He was still trying to process what had just happened. Zhang Chen's speed was impressive, surpassing even Tang San's. However, when compared to Hu Lina, he seemed noticeably slower. Yet his agility was enough to astonish Hu Lina. She couldn't help but wonder how a child, who appeared to be no older than six and had yet to summon a martial spirit, could possess such swiftness. Lost in her thoughts, Juliana didn't hesitate to unleash her own martial spirit. Her transformation was immediate. Her ears sharpened, her body sprouted fluffy fur, and a large, bushy tail emerged behind her. The transformation enhanced her beauty and significantly increased her speed. In a swift motion, she caught up to Jiang Chen, grabbing the collar of his shirt and lifting him off the ground. Jiang Chen struggled, his feet kicking at the air before he managed to stabilize himself. Hu Liana's eyes shimmered with a pink glow as she studied Zhang Chen, her voice carrying a raspy yet enchanting tone. Who are you? And why are you running? She demanded. Caught off guard by her unique charm, Zhang Chen momentarily lost himself. I'm Zhang Chen, he began, before shaking his head, snapping out of his daze. A wave of fear washed over him as he realized the precariousness of his situation. Indeed, the allure of a fox spirit is nothing short of terrifying. Had I not endured the grueling process of absorbing a soul ring and survived a catastrophe, strengthening my will to an extraordinary degree, I might have found myself completely ensnared by Hu Liana's charm. To Hu Liana's astonishment, the idea that a mere child could resist her allure was something she would have previously deemed impossible. Yet, faced with the reality before her, she had no choice but to believe it. Su Yuntao, who had caught up just in time to overhear my words, was equally taken aback. Approaching Hu Lina, he fixed his gaze on me, suspended in midair, and couldn't help but express his confusion. It's really you, kid. Why did you run just now? He inquired. With a wry smile, I acknowledged my predicament. Escape was futile, especially against a level 26 opponent like Su Yuntao, not to mention Hu Lina, who effortlessly held me aloft, her two yellow soul rings signaling her prowess. While a surprise attack might take down one, facing the other would be a different story altogether. Moreover, the thought of taking a life was something I dared not entertain. The repercussions would not only fall on me, but could potentially bring harm to Holy Soul Village. It seemed my only option was to never return to the academy or the village. Resigned to my fate, I requested Hu Liana to release me. She complied albeit with a stern warning against any attempts to flee. It dawned on me then that Su Yun Tao must have divulged my information, leading to Hu Liana's interception. The realization that the Spirit Hall's attention was now squarely on me filled me with dread. Could I still remain by Tang San's side without endangering him? Hu Liana retracted her martial spirit and instructed Su Yun Tao to escort me. Let's go. I'll take you to meet the Pope at the Spirit Hall. Try not to be nervous, he said, gripping my hand firmly to prevent any escape attempts. The mention of meeting Bibi Dong, the Pope herself, in a place as inconsequential as Notting City, sent shivers down my spine. 
the thought of what Su Yuntao could have possibly reported to warrant such a high-profile visit left me bewildered and terrified. As we made our way through the streets, Huliana's presence turned heads, her natural charm impossible to ignore. I couldn't help but admire her, despite the circumstances. Her youthful face contrasted with her mature figure, undoubtedly an effect of her fox spirit. Suddenly, Juliana stopped and faced me, her earlier cold demeanor replaced by a coquettish smile. Boy, why did you lie earlier? Why did you run? she asked. Caught off guard, I hastily concocted an excuse about wanting to avoid embarrassment after losing a duel. Her laughter in response took me by surprise, her mood swings leaving me disoriented. Curious, I asked how she saw through my lie. Without turning back, she simply stated, I've seen enough to recognize deceit at a glance. Before long, we arrived at the spirit hall. Despite having passed by it countless times, this was my first time stepping inside. I was led directly into the grand hall, where I laid eyes on the formidable Bibi Dong for the first time. Jiang Chen found himself unable to look away from the woman before him for a long while. In his mind, there was only one word to describe her. Perfect. Chapter 47. Can I Say No? In the vast expanse of the Duluo continent, if there were any women whom Jiang Chen held in high esteem, they would undoubtedly be Bibi Dong and Qian Renshui. Both women were not only immensely talented, but also possessed a magnanimity that rivaled that of men. Jiang Chen had often thought to himself that if he hadn't been so intent on achieving godhood with Tang San's assistance, he might have found himself aligning with the spirit hall much earlier. Bibi Dong gestured dismissively. You all may leave now. Sisi, Su Yuntao, and the others bowed respectfully before retreating, leaving only Bibi Dong and a few others in the room. Bibi Dong then approached Zhang Chen, stopping a short dis tance away to observe the boy with a mix of curiosity and surprise. Zhang Chen's calm demeanor in the face of such an imposing presence intrigued her. Most children, when confronted with such a formidable gathering, would be trembling in fear. Yet, Zhang Chen, after his initial moment of stunned silence, displayed no sign of fear. This led Bibi Dong to conclude that there was something extraordinary about him, for he was certainly no fool. Are you Jiang Chen? Bibi Dong inquired, her expression tinged with curiosity as she took in the sight of the boy, his face marked by pimples. Her question hung in the air, marking the beginning of an interaction that would unravel the layers of mystery surrounding the young Jiang Chen.